Hi, this is Peter from the LAP team uh, presenting a quick overview of the Laser ADX Profiler software with the basic functionality. So when you, when you open the software, the uh, first thing uh, you are presented with is this uh, is a dialog to select the data source, uh, which is which is the database, the basic database. So either you can you can see here. The, there's different types of data sources. So it's either a, a file or a PostgreSQL database or a relational form of the PostgreSQL database, or you can create a memory uh, database, which is a temporary database that will uh, disappear once you close the software so for, for testing purposes only. So let's focus on the file database, which is the simplest to use. So here I can just type in, if I want to create a new database, type in the folder, let's say LAP data, and slash and the file name, LAP data. I don't have to write the extension here. It will be the format of the of a file uh, data source will be uh, JSON. So the extension will be added automatically. I click connect. This creates the database. I can see here, uh, the database that's currently connected it's empty for now so uh, now the first first step uh, to before I, sa I start capturing is to calibrate so i click the calibrate function and here you can see what the upper camera sees i can increase the exposure a bit and uh, i put the the calibration pad on the glass pane so that the, the laser line illuminates the all the calibration points properly. And, and you see here there are uh, reflections on the glass pane which prevent the, the laser line to be detected correctly. So I have to mask them out. And I do this by left clicking and dragging on the screen to, to crop the camera view. And now you see the, the points are detected correctly, all of them indicated by these green circles. I can click, click Capture to store them. And now I can do the same for the lower camera. Again, mask out the reflection by left-clicking and dragging. Also from the side, left-clicking and dragging. And I click Capture. So now the calibration is complete. I can turn off the calibration mode and I can test the calibration by switching to the profile capture mode. And now I see there is there's a lot of uh, uh, unwanted reflections happening here due to the glass pane being in the camera view. So I can again show you a better view by expanding this. I can again left click and drag on the screen to mask out these unwanted reflections. So I only the ca camera only captures what we want it to capture. The same here from the side. So now, now you see the calibration pad is captured properly. And we can remove it and continue with, uh, calib uh, with capturing uh, a pottery fragment. So let's pick a fragment. And again, increase. Oh, you, you can see the. You can see here what the upper camera sees and what the the, the lower camera sees. And I should lower the exposure a little to get better contrast of the profile. And I can, since the, the profile is a little jaggy, so I can use the auto smooth function to smooth it out a little. It's nicer. And now I just find uh, a good section where to capture the profile. When I'm happy with it, I click capture here, or I, I can use the pedal to capture it by left clicking. And now I can turn off the profile capture mode and switch to the orientation mode. And okay, let me increase the exposure again so you can see what I'm doing. What I do now is I put the 
I take the fragment and I put it on its side so to, to capture the orientation I put the fragment on its side now I click capture which just freezes freezes the whatever is captured and I can use you can see the the profile it's not completely captured but but it's properly oriented so I can use this to to orient the the captured the properly captured profile I can move this around here by left clicking and dragging the mouse or by right clicking and dragging I can rotate the profile so I just right click and drag to rotate left click and drag to move it around and match it to to the captured data to achieve the proper orientation so once I'm once I'm happy with it I can switch to the capture diameter mode here and what I do now is I have to pick a uh, part of the profile where I will capture the the arc which will be used to, to reconstruct the diameter of the vessel so let's say here at the neck of the vessel will be ideal now here the exposure is a bit high so you can see but I can I can lower it to get a better contrast and I can click capture once to start capturing the arcs it will capture multiple of them to at average to, to get a better better reading and I click capture again to stop and now I just indicate by left clicking on the profile where I took the diameter and the, the vessel form will be reconstructed now I can proceed to to add inflection lines to complete the, the drawing I can here when I click the right mouse button the function will be turned off I can uh, I should indicate here since the vessel has a rim and a bottom that they have it and automatically the rim will be drawn and also the bottom and the, the diameter of the vessel will be calculated and displayed here as a number I, I should remember to enter the, the find number or the, the, or the sample ID here under which the drawing will be stored and I click store Uh, what's important to note is that the drawing was stored in the database but the database is not saved on the disk yet so it's just stored in the memory you can see it here in the in the browser uh, function that it's, it's stored here but it's not saved I have to click save to, to commit the changes uh, to the disk now it's now it's uh, properly saved I can see here database is saved uh, I can I can switch to the, the image preview here to see thumbnails of, of the drawings I have made I can click double click them to open them in the LAP uh, at the software again and uh, for example correct the orientation so I, I, I select by the profile by left clicking and then by right clicking and dragging I can I can adjust the orientation as I see fit Let's say if, if we uh, if we want to connect to an existing database, I can do it here by uh, using the correct uh, the connect connect to database function, and either select a recently used database or just pick a file on the disk. The databases are always these JSON files. If if I use the, the file database function, I click connect. Uh, this could be used to import uh, data so, so uh, in this way you could you could merge uh, several databases you just open one and then open another and then select import and it will automatically add the uh, data that's already uh, add the database that's already opened to the one that you are opening and th thus merging them here I click no I don't want to merge and again in the browser I can see I can see that the drawings I have made 
here you can see there is also some additional information uh, apart from the sample ID there's uh, whether there's a rim or a bottom also the calculated radius you can also add uh, your own uh, additional de descriptors here with uh, the data and edit descript descriptors function you can add other types of descriptors and also you can look at the thumbnails open the drawings by double clicking them and correct them here i can for example i can move the photo around by left clicking and dragging it or rotate it by right clicking and dragging so the the data the database uh, is uh, as I said, it's stored in the JSON format and the drawings and the photographs are stored uh, as files on the disk. So let's say here in the example database, this is the, the, the database itself. And in this in a numbered folders, uh, there's all the all the so this is these are the photographs and these are the uh, drawings in S, SVG formats, which can be used or opened, for example, in uh, the Inkscape software. And let's say let's say I want to to work with this data, like make, make some statistics or, or just just get them into a spreadsheet format. So I can do it easily by just using this export data function and uh, just uh, Exporting, yeah, save, saving, saving it, and it generates uh, like a regular spreadsheet with all the information that you have seen in the browser. So sample ID, rim, bottom, and the reconstructed sample radius. Also, if you edit other any other descriptors, they would be displayed here in the in the file, and you can see the the reconstruction is uh, here provided as a as a path to the file containing it, and the so it's the drawing itself, and the the profile is stored as a as a polygon. So the, these are the coordinates of the profile, and uh, they are stored in in uh, the well known text format, the WKT format, which is a standard format to store. Uh, geometry information so you could use this for any further analysis so this concludes the uh, quick overview of the LAP software I hope it will make your life easier have a nice day